Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at correlations so we can answer questions from exercise 4a. Now hopefully this is more of a revision video than a learning new content. So here we go. So scatter diagrams are representing two sets of data, um, typically bivariate data that have a connection between them. So uh, positive correlation is where our graph will roughly look like this as one value increases and another value increases. We say that this has positive correlation. Negative correlation as one value increases, the other value decreases. So this is how it would look graphically. We say that this has negative correlation. In the case of no correlation, there is basically no pattern between the data points in our data set. OK, so I hope this is all very familiar to you. This, what I would say, has a, probably a strong positive correlation if it was a few more points spread out, such as we have here. Yes, it still looks roughly positive, but it's probably be a weaker positive correlation rather than a strong positive correlation we had before. OK, let's go through a little example here. So in a study, the population density, in other words, um, how many people there are per hectare of land, and the distance from the city centre was investigated by choosing sample areas. The results were shown below. So when the distance from the city centre is only 0.6 kilometres, we have a population density of 50 people. Well, that's to say that 50 people live within a single hectare of land. And it looks like as we go further out, we should see some correlation here. So let's draw a little diagram. Distance from the centre along the bottom, population density along the side, and let's plot all of these coordinates. And we should see here that there is a negative uh, correlation here. And what does this mean um, for our data? Well, it means that as we get further out from the city, the population density decreases. So a typical question that you'll face in an exam will ask you to relate the context of your correlation back to the context of the question. OK, and a sentence like this is what you'll have to write as an answer. OK, so two variables um, sometimes have a causal relationship, but just because you see correlation doesn't mean that there is a causality there. So if we look at this graph here, we see that uh, on one axis here we have Nobel laureates per 10 million population, and along the bottom here we have chocolate consumption um, per kilogram per year per capita. We could see here that it looks like there is a slightly weak, maybe positive correlation here. Um, so think about the context of this data. I, I doubt that um, eating tons and tons of chocolate is going to cause you to become a Nobel laureate. So sometimes the data is linked, but often it is not linked. And there's maybe an underlying route here um, to do with Europeanness and chocolate consumption. OK, so cause a, a correlation does not necessarily infer a causation. Causation meaning one thing causes another thing to happen. OK, another little example here. Uh, Hideko was interested in uh, to see if there was a relationship between the, what people earn and the age at which they left education training. She asked 14 of her friends to fill in an anonymous questionnaire and recorded the results of their scatter diagram. Immediately I'm thinking 14 friends, there's probably going to be some bias in this data here, so I'm probably not going to believe this, um, this data if it were a random sample. Okay, we can see here there is a, a weak negative correlation here between the age at which people leave education and their hourly pay rate. Um, Hideko says that the data supports her conclusion that more education causes people to earn a lower hourly rate, which wouldn't really make sense according to what we know from general knowledge. Um, give one reason why Hideko's example may not be valid. Um, her data set is very small. She's only consulted 14 of her friends. Um, you could also say that those who left education earlier have had a chance to build up their work experience and increasing their pay. So it depends on what age we've taken this set of data from. If all of these people were 40 years old, then you would expect people to have left education and have highly earned, highly pay rate. Whereas if you're taking this data set at 22 years old, the 16-year-old people who left education will have had 
six years to have built up work experience. So you'd naturally expect them to um to earn more more wages per hour. Okay. And if we were to delete this data point perhaps, then we'd see just a flat hourly pay rate. It's only one data point here. In fact you'd probably say maybe a positive correlation. So very few points are take are making a considerable difference in this data set here. Right, so hopefully most of that was just revision stuff. Um, pause the video and see if you can quickly have a go at this question here. Right, then well done for having a go at this question here. So it's question one from exercise 4a. Some research was done into the effectiveness of a weight-reducing drug. Seven people recorded their weight loss and this was compared with the length of time for which they had been treated. A scatter diagram was drawn to represent this information. Describe the type of correlation shown by the scatter diagram. I would say here it's a pretty strong positive correlation here. Okay, interpret the context uh, of this correlation. So as the length of treatment increases, so reading off the axes here is a good way of referring to the context of the question here, as the weight of the treatment increases, the loss in weight increases. Okay. Okay, so that was the answer to question B then. So hopefully that was all revision material to you. Have a go at some questions from exercise 4A and make sure you're answering these questions perfectly. They should be easy marks when it comes to an exam. Right, thanks very much for watching.